Naruto x Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections is the seventh installment in the Ultimate Ninja Storm series. However, it feels less like a new entry and more like a glorified DLC for Storm 4. Connections is not meant to be a fully new Storm game. It's not trying to be Storm 5. The series has had filler games in the past, such as Generations and Revolutions, but the problem is that those filler games came out within a year of mainline entries, whereas Connections is now released seven years after Storm 4 meaning CyberConnect 2 had 7 years to develop this game, so keep that in mind for the rest of this review. Now, without further ado, let me explain to you why Naruto x Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections is a waste of your money. The Naruto Storm games have never changed too drastically with each entry, at least in regards to gameplay, but Connections has changed enough from Storm 4 to feel somewhat different which is both good and bad. It seems as if every change they made to this game is a double-edged sword. For every positive change, there are double the amount of negative changes. The largest change here is that every character can now use two jutsus in-game as opposed to only one. I do like the concept of having two jutsus, but I do not like the execution and implementation of said concept. In order to make the controls work, CyberConnect replaced the chakra shuriken move with a second jutsu, meaning that you can no longer chakra load your shuriken. I really don't see why they did this. They could have easily figured out any other way to map the controls. I can understand wanting to add a second jutsu move, but it shouldn't be at the cost of an already existing move. Did they think this would be easier to learn? Cheaper to develop? I don't really know, it just seems like a waste. But that's not even the worst problem to come from the second jutsu. The worst problem is that selectable jutsus are gone. What I mean by this is that in previous games, you were able to choose which jutsu you wanted to use for each character from a list of their available jutsus. But now, that's entirely gone. You were stuck with two jutsus the CyberConnect chose for each character. There's genuinely no reason to do this. Why could they not just port over the jutsus from the previous games? How are they this cheap that they can't afford to port over moves from previous games? I see no benefit to doing this. All it does is make some characters less desirable to play as. Oh, and you thought I was done complaining about the second jutsu slot? They not only removed the chakra shuriken move, but they also removed tilts. At least for this one, I know exactly why they did it. They removed the tilts so that for some characters, they could simply turn their tilt into a second jutsu. That's right, Cyber Connect is so cheap that they would rather remove an entire gameplay mechanic than develop a couple of new moves for some outdated and underrepresented characters. Finally, moving on from the second jutsu fiasco, the game overall feels much faster paced and caters towards a more aggressive playstyle due to a couple of other gameplay changes. The most noticeable being that the chakra meter recharges on its own and is way quicker than in past games. Because of this, you don't really have to spend much time trying to sit still and charge your chakra meter and you can get back into the action more quickly. Substitution jutsus on the other hand feel like they recharge slower. That's because while in past games, the substitution meter would fill while taking damage, it just doesn't in this game. It's stuck on a very strict timer. This combined with a faster chakra charge means that landing combos is much easier, but it also means that it's very difficult to get out of an enemy's combo. Guards break much quicker in this game too, which also contributes to the annoyance of inescapable combos. Items are now on a cooldown rather than the set number per match. That's cool, I guess. And uh, that's about it for gameplay changes. It definitely feels more fast paced compared to Storm 4, but all in all, it's a Storm game and it feels like a Storm game. Bandai is noticeably not heavily advertising any of these changes, rather what they're focused on marketing is the new simple control scheme, which allows players to execute combos by just mashing one button. In other words, it takes out the skill element that's required to be good at fighting games. It's good for beginners, I guess, but no one asked for this. What Bandai is really focused on advertising is this game's character roster, which according to them, boasts over 130 characters. In the actual game, there are 157 character slots. The reason I'm specifying character slots is because there are not 157 unique characters. Some characters, despite having the same moveset, take up multiple different slots. For example, there are 10 different Naruto's. Now I have no problem with each different form of Naruto being its own character slot, but when base Naruto takes up three different character slots, then I have a problem. This was clearly done so that the roster can look more full and so that they can say they have over 130 characters. It's blatantly obvious when you see that there are Boruto era versions of the Konoha 11 and yet they all have the same exact movesets as the Shippuden era versions. At least with the kid versus teen versions they actually play differently so being in separate slots makes sense there. This however just doesn't. The main problem with this game's character roster are the new characters. There are only 10 new characters, and 3 of those are alternate versions of characters already in the game. Those 10 new characters are Baryon Mode Naruto, Sasuke, Karma Boruto, Kawaki, Indra, Ashura, Jigen, Delta, 
Boro, and Kashin Koji. Only 10 new characters is absolutely pathetic and is the lowest amount of new characters in any Storm game. And the choices are so weird. Baryan mode Naruto makes sense, but Baryan mode is his awakening. So most of the time, you're just playing as Kurama Link mode Hokage Naruto. Why didn't they just make Naruto play in Baryan mode the whole time? We already have Boruto era Sasuke, don't know why we need a new one. Boruto and Kawaki make sense, we do already have three Borutos, but none of them use Karma, so he gets a pass. The Kara characters make complete sense, but why is there no Ishiki? And finally, Indra and Ashura? Who asked for them? There are a number of Naruto era characters that have never been in Storm and deserve to be, like Kurana and Anko. And there are Boruto characters that also deserve to be in Storm, like Adult Konohamaru and Shikadai, both of which already had models and movesets in Storm 4's DLC. The most ridiculous part about all of this is that Bandai has practically admitted to why there's so few new characters. It's so that they can just sell more DLC. There's also some new character customization options and several new costumes. The character customization, which I admit I was excited for, is pretty much worthless, as all you can do is add a couple of accessories to your characters. And the new costumes are pretty lackluster for the most part. They're just recolors or they'll just remove some piece of clothing like a jacket or something. Neither the customization nor the costumes are robust enough to be considered selling points. Storm Connections has two different story modes, history and special story. Let's first cover the history mode, which Banda has been especially hyping up. They market it as, and I quote, the story of Naruto and Sasuke's rivalry combined into one. So I, along with many others, assumed that this meant that they would repackage all the boss fights from the previous games with a couple of regular battles and cutscenes to tie the story together and give a comprehensive overview of the stories of Naruto and Naruto Shippuden. And we were dead wrong. The history mode is a couple of regular battles strung together through cheap slideshows, half of which don't even have voice acting, and a couple of boss fights. They couldn't even be bothered to port over all of the boss fights, so fan favorites like Pain vs Jiraiya are just not there. And you might be saying, but the story mode is supposed to be the story of Naruto and Sasuke, so including a battle that doesn't feature either of them makes sense. See, I would agree, but they still included some battles that don't feature either of them, like Kakashi vs Zabuza. So make up your mind! And even the boss battles that are included aren't updated in any way. The graphics don't look any better than they originally did. The only difference visual-wise is that there's some weird color correction applied to make it look different than it previously did. What's also weird is that in this game's opening animation, they show footage of boss battles that aren't even in the game. How is that not false advertising? The history mode is genuinely so lazy. They skip over entire parts of the story, even ones that include Naruto and Sasuke. Like the force of death, from the tuning exams is just non-existent. The only battle from the preliminaries is Naruto vs Kiba, and the only battle from the finals is Naruto vs Neji. Seriously, no Rock Lee vs Gara or Sasuke vs Gara. The only other thing of note with this history mode is that there are these stupid little reaction buttons at the end of each episode that supposedly show how other players reacted, but you cannot convince me that these percentages were calculated based on real player data. I don't really know who this story mode is aimed towards. Fans of Naruto won't like it because it skips crucial story beats, Fans of Storm games won't like it because they already played superior story modes in past games. New fans of Naruto won't like it because it doesn't properly adapt the story. And new fans of Storm games won't like it because it's cheap and past Storm games have had better story modes. If you want to play the full story of Naruto through Storm, just buy Storm Legacy. It's much cheaper and you get a vastly superior story mode. The special story mode is slightly better than history. It's an original story set in the Boruto era and it's not bad, but the actual structure of the story mode is nothing compared to past Storm story modes. Modes. There's no free roam, and there's no quick time events. There are fully original animated cutscenes, which is nice, but it feels like this was only included so that the game doesn't feel like a total ripoff, even though it definitely still is. The online in this game is just completely unacceptable for a full priced game in 2023. For starters, there is no way to invite your friends to a match. That's right, you cannot play with your friends online. That is just ridiculous. Bandai said that they'll be adding it in an update later on, but you cannot release a full priced game and leave out crucial gameplay mechanics and expect to fix it afterwards. This is just a horrible business practice and is completely anti-consumer. The other problem with online is that it's just poorly implemented and managed. There's no punishment for disconnecting mid-game, which means that rage quitting leads to no consequences. There is a trust system which will go down if you disconnect, but doesn't actually lead to anything, and means nothing in the grand scheme of things. To make that system even more worthless, once you match with someone, you can't decline the battle. So say you match with someone whose connection is terrible, 
You're made aware of this before the match starts by the way. You cannot back out of the match. So you're forced to either alt F4 or deal with a laggy match, which I had to deal with on numerous occasions. I sure do love playing a slideshow, it really reminds me of the history cutscenes. And the cherry on top is that there's no rollback netcode, which is just absurd for a fighting game in 2023. Naruto x Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections is the result of corporate greed from both publisher Bandai Namco and developer CyberConnect2. It's very apparent that this game was developed as cheaply as possible in order to profit off the series' popularity. Luckily, it seems that most fans are also aware of this as the game is sitting at a rating of mostly negative on Steam. CyberConnect2 and the Storm series used to be the gold standard for anime games, but Connections has soured that feeling. It's an incomplete game featuring unnecessary gameplay changes, a laughable amount of new characters, an insultingly poor history mode, a lackluster special story mode, and an unacceptable online mode that was made solely to profit off of a popular franchise. If you don't believe that this is a cash grab, just look at how many different versions of this game are for sale. There's the standard edition for $60, which is already overpriced. There's the Deluxe Edition that comes with the Season Pass and a couple of costumes for $85, an Ultimate Edition with everything from Deluxe and a few more costumes for $95, a Sound Ultimate Bundle that is the Ultimate Edition plus in-game music of 5 Naruto openings that you can just listen to for free from YouTube, and this bundle costs $115, but that's not even the worst one. There's a collector's edition that comes with some figures and some other garbage for $140, but that's not even the worst! The actual worst is the premium collector's edition, which includes more garbage and costs $200. What game needs this many editions, and who would buy this? I bought the standard edition on Steam and will be refunding it, because it is not worth $60, let alone $200. I genuinely don't know if they can fix this game. I know they'll add friend invites to online, but they sure as hell are not going to fix any of the other problems I have with the game. There will be more DLC, but whatever characters they decide to add should have just been included in the base game. They'll probably add more costumes, maybe some new team jutsus, but I don't think they can add anything significant enough to save this game. As it stands, I do not recommend this game to anyone, especially those who already own Storm 4. If you look at this game in a vacuum and ignore the existence of all the other Storm games and look past the anti-consumer habits present, then I would give it a 7 out of 10. But if you take everything I just ranted about into account, then I give it a 2 out of 10. I didn't want to be overly negative in this video, but I really have nothing positive to say. If you're enjoying the game and having fun, then all the power to you. But I just can't look past all this game's glaring issues, and the only way that we can get better anime games is to voice our opinions and let Bandai know that we deserve better. <laughs>